doing is we're working on fractional exponents part two. Now fractional exponents part two is basically dealing with fractional exponents where the numerator, the top half of the exponent for the fractional exponent is greater than one. Now you need to recall one times one over two times three. That's the same as calculating one half times three over one. Now, the next line of our calculation is going to be one times three over two times one. So we end up with three over two. Now, our problem that we're looking at is 25 to the three halves. Now, we're going to use something that we used from the previous unit. We're going to use the concept of power of a power. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to undo the three halves and we're going to write it as 25 to the one half in brackets all raised to the power of three. And you know that one half times three gives us three halves just like we calculated at the beginning. So we have 25 and we write the second root of 25 and we're just going to write to the exponent three. So now we end up with 5 to the 3, and we end up with 125. So now let's keep going. Now, if we have 8 to the 2 thirds, we have 8 to the 1 third raised to the power of 2, which is really the third root of 8 raised to the power of 2, which is just 2 raised to the 2, which is 4. Now, you'll notice the third root, the third, the denominator of our fraction, basically ends up on the root. And the two ends up on the outside of our exponent. So basically, the denominator is on the root. And then we have the numerator of our fractional exponent being on the outside of our exponent. Now, the one thing you'll also notice is that I tend to always make sure that my result of the so solution of the root is always going to be in a bracket when I calculate something like this. That's because sometimes these numbers will have a negative sign on the base. So I want you to make sure you put brackets around your base number as well. So if you punch it in the calculator, the number comes out properly. Okay? So now, that's all I need you to remember. Remember, every time we go and calculate the third root of 8 or the fifth root of something, we put that in a bracket before we go and exponentiate it again with the outside part. Now we'll move on to the summary of what we're studying today. So now we'll continue on to the overall gist of the lesson. What you need to realize is that the numerator of our fractional exponent is the top half of the fraction. The denominator of our fractional exponent is the bottom half of the fraction. And you'll notice that the denominator of the fraction is used on the root of the base. Remember, this is what we call the base. And then the numerator of our fractional exponent goes on the outside of our computation. Now, that's it, really. Now, the only corollary is this, is if I have something that starts with a negative fractional exponent, we can write it like this. So we take the negative exponent, we take the negative, and we literally, basically, just rewrite the minus sign on our exponent to be on the numerator of our calculation. So in essence, we're going to have 
negative m over n as our exponent. So when we go and do our conversion into our radical form, we have just like before, the denominator being on the root. And then our numerator, numerator being on the outside. And then all we do is flip everything to be this fall, this final stage right here. I have no problem with you showing the two steps to get to our final solution, or you can jump straight from this step to this step for our final calculations. So now on to the problems for the day. Using the rules that we just experimented with. So we have nine to the three halves. So we're gonna write this as the second root of nine because that's our denominator raised to the three. So now the square root of nine, punch that in your calculator to you get three raised to the power of three, which is 27. And you'll notice how I always keep the result of my rooted part in a bracket. We're gonna do the same for the next problem and we're gonna get the following. So you'll notice the denominator of our fraction is three. So that goes on our root and then for the numerator, the numerator goes on the outside. So we take the third root of 64 and we get the following. Four raised to the four, but the four is in brackets. And now we get our final answer of four raised to the four, which is 256. This next problem is 27 to the negative two thirds. So if we use the second equation here, you know that we have 27 to the negative three half, negative two thirds. So this negative two thirds is going to end up being something looking like this. So we can automatically just flip it in one step. One over 27 to the, well, third root of two. That's what that equation was for. So we didn't have to do that middle step. So now we end up with one over the third root of 27 is three squared, which ends up being one over nine. For the next part of this problem, we're gonna actually try this problem again, but this time we're gonna do two steps. We're going to flip the fraction, and then we're going to do our radicalization. So we have 27 to the negative two thirds. So what we're gonna do is, because of the minus sign, we're gonna write 1 over 27 to the 2 thirds to remove the minus sign on the exponent. Now that we have 27 to the 2 thirds on the denominator, what we have to do is we have to radicalize it since there's no negative sign on the exponent. So we get 1 over the third root of 27 raised to the 2. Now, the third root of 27 is, well, 3. Now, 3 squared is 1 over 9. Now, your homework for the day is this problem here. So, it's basically number 39, 1, no, number 3, 4, 6, and 8.